Jerry of the Circus. for Jerry of the Circus. Here, Rags. Here, boy. You quit running around so much in this backyard. Stay right by me. I'm not going over to our wagon. I'm going over to Johnny Bradley's wagon. I'm going to tell him about the party last night. Come here now. Just because your leg is well, you, you can't have to show off and run so fast. Now, you wait right here. Mr. Bradley. Oh, Mr. Bradley, guess he's not here yet. Well, we'll just wait around for him. What do you say? Hey, how about some tricks? Think you can jump up on my shoulder like you do with bumps? Okay, let's try it. One, two, three, up. Good boy, good for you. Now let's see if you can jump down to my foot and somersault back up to my shoulder again. Ready? Go. Hooray for you, Rag. You're all right. You know, I bet you and I could do bumps act without any trouble. I'm glad to know that, too, because Mr. Randall said I was the understudy, and I have to be able to do all of the clowns act. <laughs> now, let's try that double somersault now. No, get in back of me like you do with bumps. That's the fella. Now, ready? One, two, three. Go up. Golly, you did it. <laughs> oh, Johnny, I, I mean, Mr. Bradley, I, I didn't see you. Well, I just got here, Jerry, just in time to see that last trick. I was just putting Rags through some of his stunts to see if he could do them with me as well as he does with Bumps. Well, I should say there's little doubt uh, about that after witnessing your demonstration. Yeah, he, he does the tricks just as easy with me as he does them with Bumps. I'll bet he'd, he'd even work with you if you'd give him the right cues. Yes, I believe he would. I've said before, but it bears repeating. That dog is a mighty fine trooper. Yes, you sure are, Rags. Uh, won't you come into the wagon, Jerry? I've got a few things I have to do. Uh-huh. I came over here looking for you. Well, fine. Come in, then. Uh, did you have something special on your mind? Just about the party last night. I wanted to tell you about it. Good. Sit down, Jerry. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Lie right down here, Rags. You sure missed out on a good time, Mr. Bradley. You had a nice time, did you? Oh, it was a keen party. And Mr. Grayson sure made us feel at home. We had spaghetti, all <laughs> kinds of sandwiches, and even ice cream and cake. Well, that sounds good. It was. And Jason told us a lot of stories about wild animals and told us how he started to be a trainer when he was real young. And then Mr. Grayson told us about law school and all about the hard things he had to study to become a lawyer. He seems to be a nice sort of person. Well, Mr. Grayson's nice, all right. And is he smart? He is? Uh-huh. He, he says he gets his smartness from his father... He said that? He sure did. He thinks a lot of his father. But what did he say about him, Jerry? Well, his father is an actor. A pretty big one, I guess. Is that so? Yeah. And it was his father who sent him through law school. What else did he say about his father, though, Jerry? He said he owed everything to his father. And he's trying awful hard to make good for his sake. My, that's a nice thought. Yeah, he sure is a real nice man, all right. 
Oh, what else did you do at the party, Jerry? Oh, we played some games, and then Mr. Grayson did some tricks for us. <laughs> did he do the one where he puts a coin on the back of each finger and then throws them up and catches them all with the same hand? Yeah. Uh, how did you know? Why, I... Uh, well, uh, oh, I thought he'd do that. You see, that's an old trick. I mean, he probably learned that at school. Oh, uh-huh. And then we played the radio, and Patsy and Jason danced together. I sure wish you could have been there with us. I, I know you'd have had a nice time, too, because Bump sure enjoyed himself. Yes, I guess I did miss quite a lot, Jerry. And not only last night. I've missed a lot all through life. Ah, uh, but alas, there is never a loss without a gain. So I must be grateful for the good fortune that has come my way. That's what my father always told me. He said if I'd give thanks for the little things, I, I'd soon be given thanks for bigger things. Truer words were never spoken, Jerry. That's a sound bit of advice. Now, let me see. What was it I had to do? Oh, yes, yes, I must fix Lula's hat. Here we are. What are you going to do with it? Oh, I fear the elastic has had its day. I must replace it with a new piece. Yeah, I noticed that the hat keeps slipping off Lulu's head. And Lulu's not the kind of a duck that likes to be untidy. Ah, she's very fussy about her costume, such as it is. She sure is a smart duck, all right. How did you ever train her? It wasn't difficult, Jerry. You see, ducks are timid. But once you gain their confidence and make a pet of them, they become very manageable. It may surprise you to know that I think an awful lot of Lulu. No, that doesn't surprise me. Lulu's your pal, just like Rags is mine. That's it, exactly. She is my pal, and a very understanding friend, too. Uh, just like a dog, she seems to sense my moods, and I appreciate that. They sure do understand a lot. Golly, I don't know what I'd have done without Rags when I was left all alone. Well, there, yeah, that's finished. Now that hat should fit properly. It didn't take you long. You know how to sew, all right. <laughs> Necessity teaches us to do a lot of things around the circus, Jerry. Say, look. Look who's out there. Hmm, well, who is it? Oh, it's Bumps. Hello, Bumps. Looking for me? Oh, there you are, Jerry. Come on in. I'm coming. Jerry and I were just visiting. I was telling Mr. Bradley about the party last night. Oh, oh and that was a party. You missed something, Johnny. <laughs> so Jerry tells me. Did you tell Johnny about all the spaghetti that I ate? No, oh, he didn't mention a word of it. Golly, I forgot all about that. Well, don't see how you could let that slip your mind, Jerry. You had a couple of plates full yourself. <laughs> and it sure was good. Sally's a wonderful cook. She's going to marry Mr. Grayson pretty soon. Yeah, so he told me. Uh, tell me about her, Jerry. When he introduced her to us, he, he said they're waiting until he's doing better in his law office, and then they're going to get married. Oh, a and she's real nice, is she? Oh, she's a mighty fine girl, Johnny. Well, I'm glad. I mean, uh, it's nice to see a young man like Richard Grayson find a good life's part. Yes, it is. Did you want me for something, Bump? Oh, no, no, nothing special, Jerry. I think I'll take Rags and put him through some stunts. I just had him doing some of the tricks you do with him. Yes, and Jerry finds that Rags works just as well with him as he does with you, Bump. Oh, is that so? Well, does he do the shoulder jumps and somersaults, too? Sure he does. He does every one of the tricks with me. Well, I was just thinking maybe I'd try a few new ones. Well, what kind? Oh, I don't know. I'll figure something out. <laughs> You just leave it to Bumps to figure out something new to do. Why don't you teach him to jump through a hoop of fire? Oh, no, Jerry, I don't think that'd be so good. You see, after Jason has that leopard jump through the ring of flame, or to see Rags do it well, wouldn't be any novelty at all. You know, I, I don't see how Jason ever got that leopard to, to jump through fire like that. Well, fire is an animal's worst enemy. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but Jason's clever. If anyone in the world can get one of those big cats to do an astounding trick, well, he can. Yeah, he's sure a good wild animal trainer. Well, I think I'd better get at those tricks. I'm going to do it before lunch. Oh. Well, now, where's my partner, Rags? There he is, Bumps. Laying down there by that trunk. I guess he's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rags. Rags. He's sleeping all right. Come on, fella, wake up. Rags, we're calling you. <laughs> well, Rags, I'm going to teach you a few new tricks. Can I go with you and watch? I don't see why not. Rags is still your dog, even if he is my partner in the show. Well, I'll see you later, Mr. Brown. All right, Jerry, and thank you for the visit. It was nice of you to come over and tell me about the party. Well, goodbye, Johnny. Come on, Rags. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, goodbye, Jerry. Oh, hello there, Mr. Randall. Morning, Mr. Randall. Oh, hello, Bumps and Jerry. 
Where are you heading? We were just in Mr. Bradley's wagon visiting him, and now we're going over to the big top to rehearse rags and some new tricks. Oh, is uh, Johnny in there? Uh, yeah, sure, Sam. Uh, I want to have a little talk with him. Uh, I'll see you after a while. Okay. All right. Well, bye. bye. Uh, can I come in, Johnny? Well, Mr. Randall, surely. Come in, come in. When the door's open, I'm always receiving visitors. Huh. Uh, there's uh, something I'd like to take up with you, Johnny. Yes, Mr. Randall. It's about you and your son. You know, Johnny, I I think you should go see him while we're playing here. I really do. Oh, no, Mr. Randall. That would never do. Never would I have my boy know that his father is a clown. He knows my histronic ability, and it would hurt him. I know, I know. You've been telling him in your letters that uh, you've been doing big things on the stage. Oh, not because I want him to think his father is a great man or anything like that, but... I know the boy, and I feel I'm doing the right thing, sir. Now, 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 wait a minute. Uh, you'd like to see him, wouldn't you? Have a nice long talk. Oh, indeed I would, yes, sir. Well, then, why not go see him and not let him know that you're with the circus? Good. How could that be done? Well, isn't there some excuse for you to pay him a visit? Well, yes, there is. I've saved up a hundred dollars that I was going to mail to him. So you can take it to him instead. Tell him you're just passing through town on business. Yes, I could do that. Of course you could. You'd make that boy of yours very happy. And there's little question about how much pleasure you'd get in seeing him. But perhaps I could uh, tell him that I'm passing through with someone and that they're waiting for me at the railroad station. Yes, that's all right. I'll make my visit very brief so he won't gather anything from my conversation. You let your boy do most of the talking. After all, you want to find out as much as you can about how he's getting along. You just keep asking him questions about himself and he'll be so busy answering them he, he won't have time to ask you any. Oh, the very thought of seeing him and having a talk makes, makes my old heart skip a beat or two. I'll do it. Good. <laughs> Go to his office today. Uh, we're leaving tonight, you know. You'll feel like a new man after you see him. But my my clothes are none too good, Mr. Randall. Now, don't let that stop you. Your son will think you're doing very well when he sees this on your finger. Mr. Randall, your diamond ring. Oh, it's beautiful, but, oh, I couldn't wear it. Oh, yes, you can. Go ahead, put it on. I, I think you look prosperous enough. I'll do it. Uh. Oh, but... How can I ever thank you, sir? No, you don't have to thank me. I feel that you should see your boy and have a talk with him. You'll both enjoy it. Oh, I know we will. Your whole life is wrapped up in that son of yours, and to pass through Jackson City without seeing him would be a crime. You have a heart of gold, Mr. Oh, Randall. not at all, not at all, Johnny. I, I, I'm just human. I'll go to Richard's office this afternoon, Mr. Randall. Oh, this will be a milestone in my life. Uh -huh. 